Super Nanny's timeout technique breakdown. We are talking about the Columbo family. Let's dive in. JJ. Later on in the day, JJ started a kickoff, and as Dad was dealing with Julia, I wanted to help Mom brush up on her discipline skills. Yeah. JJ. Oh. Do not scream at Mommy. Oh, you do not hit me. Yeah. Do not scream. Stop it. You kick me. You're going to naughty room. I gave you a warning not to hit mommy and you kicked and hurt mommy again. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. There was no warning. There was no, do not kick me. Otherwise, you're going to go into timeout. Joe Frost is going over the timeout technique, breaking down step one, which is the warning. She explains it beautifully. But I'm just left wondering what even started all of this? What provoked this behavior issue? Okay. All right, let's start over again here. Come down to his level. Have that command in your voice, low speech pattern, okay? But before mum could finish her warning, JJ scurried underneath the bed. But now the child's going under the bed, he thinks it's a game. And I just feel like a lot of these issues can be avo avoided. We heard mom say something along the lines of, don't scream at me. And so I'm gonna use that as a jumping off point. Let's say that he screamed at her because she was saying, you need to share with your sister. And then he didn't like that, okay? I would look at my husband and I go, hey, babe, can you take her out of the room? Because I'm trying to lower the stimulation level. Then once the door shuts and it's just me, my son and I, I would look at him and I'd go, okay, I can't hear you when you speak like that. You wanted the trains to yourself and your sister came over and she wanted to use the train too, huh? Yes. And you didn't want to share it. I see. You like to play with all the trains by yourself, but your sister was in here. And you know what? In our home, we share what's in our house. There are times when you get to play by yourself and you don't have to share anything with anyone. We have independent playtime. And there are times when we share. And this is a time for sharing. And then your child might throw their body on the floor, as they do, because it's really hard for them. And that's when you're going to talk less and you're going to let them work through those emotions. I know this is hard. You're not giving in to them. They're just having an emotional response. Let them have their little fit. And then you go, we're going to try this again because in our home, we share. So let's practice. All right, you hold this one and then I'm not gonna touch that one because that one's in your hand. So you're using it. So I'm gonna say, excuse me, can I use that please? And then, okay, now you try it. Okay, oh, I see this toy right here. No one's touching that toy. So I can touch this toy. And then the child might think, ah, all of it's my toys, right? Because that's what they do. Remember, what is not in our hands can be used by other people. And if you're using it, it's okay. I'm not going to take it out of your hands and you don't take anything out of my hands and you practice it. Come out here now. If you do not come out here now, I will put you in the naughty room. JJ, I told you to come out here and you didn't listen. You're going to the naughty room. Don't talk, just take it there. You're gonna be in a timeout because you're kicking me and trying to hurt me. You do not hurt your mother. You do not hurt anyone. Stop it. Timer. And it wasn't long before JJ left the naughty room. We are going through the steps. You take the child, place them in the naughty area. If they get up, you place them back. Very little communication, which is what mom really needs to work on, and Joe is helping. Now, pulling the child out from underneath the bed. I personally wouldn't have done, just like I don't chase kids unless it's an unsafe situation, like we're outside, but I'm not gonna chase you. I'm not feeding it, I'm not pulling you out from under a bed. I'm not feeding into this game. This is not a game. I would have just left the room with the other people. We would have just went downstairs and we would have started playing Play-Doh. Then the child would have looked around and went, oh, that attention I ordered did not get delivered. And then they would have went down the steps and they would have tried to join playing Play-Doh and that's not gonna happen because that would be permissive parenting. So then I would have disciplined at that moment. Okay, you're here, now we're going to discipline, whether that's a timeout for you or it's what I explained earlier, which is teaching, which I think is more valuable in most situations. That's when it happens. So oh you've got the little one. Yes. And you need to do a timeout. Right. Obviously. Right. So you need to think about how you're gonna do that. Yes. All we do is just put her in her crib. 
Now that Mum's worked out how she's going to handle the situation, all she needs to do is follow through. You got sent to the naughty room for kicking and hurting Mommy. You can get out of the room when you say sorry to Mommy nicely. It's so great to see the tailoring of this situation. Joe asks mom, what are you gonna do with her while you're handling your son? Okay, we're gonna put her in the playpen. Then she goes, she follows through, gets to the end, we all clap, the music changes, she's successful. Now let's see how dad does with his turn. So Joe, we're gonna take a look at your discipline skills here uh -oh. and see if you've polished <laughs> up some. You can't scream, if you scream again, I'm fucking time out. Where's your... Come down here, we'll find the pieces. Are they down here? Any more pieces in here? No! All right, JJ. Come here, baby. You gotta sit in timeout for me. Come here, JJ, come here. I'm not. You're what? Get in the timeout chair. You're screaming what you about. Give me this, sit down. I did appreciate in the beginning when dad started implementing the timeout technique that it wasn't coming from a mean place. It was like, hey, I guess we gotta do that timeout thing, you know? And that lets a child know it's not a power struggle, it's just these are the rules and you broke one and therefore this is going to happen. Look at daddy, look at daddy. I told you to stop screaming. No, you're not having your toy right now. Give me your toy. Yeah. Just sit right there. No more screaming. Please send us actually up, so what do I do? Do that? Yeah. Okay, go inside. Right. Yeah. Put you in timeout because you're screaming too much and too loud. This is not a joke. Look at daddy. Look at daddy. This is not a joke. Daddy's not happy with you when you scream like that. Now we're screaming in time out. What was learned in all of this? I will note that he says something that we try to avoid. That doesn't make daddy happy. Our discipline should not be connected to how we feel about our children. It's just, this is my job to teach you. This is a rule that you didn't follow, therefore this is going to happen. Just keep your feelings out of it. Let's see what Joe has to say. Each step is really important because it allows the child to learn that what you say is what you mean. Hands are not necessary unless JJ is lashing out. Okay. What you don't want is look at me, look at me. Stand. You, you don't want to be physical. Okay. Just being able to say, look at me please. You should be able to take that basic direction. So there is much for us still to do. I believe that we certainly need to continue with some discipline. Okay. Um, so uh, we're still ready to be putting in some work. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with everything Joe just said. It is completely unnecessary to be physically moving our children. Now, the next time we are together, Joe and mom get into a fight. Mom is not backing down on one specific issue. I will see you then. Bye.